Welcome to this edition of Signs and Portents. In this series, I'll be talking about patterns and symbols seen in various episodes of A Game of Thrones. Today, I'll be taking a look at spirals and circles and shall examine their significance. What do I mean by the spiral? Well, I'm referring to the arrangement of stones with a heart tree at its center created by the children of the forest as seen in episode 5 of season 6. Perhaps it's meant to signify a wheel, but the wheel and the spiral hold similar meaning. Both represent a continuous cycle. There is no beginning and no end. Through Bran's journey back in time, we are allowed a glimpse of this spiral arrangement twice in episode 5, but it's not the first time this design shows up. We've seen it at the Fist of the First Men, after the White Attack on the Night's Watch, and after Dani's first flight on her dragon, when she becomes a centerpiece to a Dothraki horde, all whirling around her in circles. After taking Yunkai in season 3, Daenerys walks into a multitude of freed slaves. She becomes a central figure here also, lifted up and even rotated for all to see, while the freed gather in concentric rings around her, hailing her as Misa. It seems to me that all these spirals and whirling patterns are just begging for some attention. Is there any connection between these scenes, and if so, what does it mean? First off, let's take a look at the symbolism of spirals and circles in general. They are very ancient symbols, older than the pyramids of Giza, dating all the way back to the Stone Age. The spiral is a feminine symbol, representing fertility, death and rebirth, and regeneration. It occurs almost universally in nature recalling the Fibonacci sequence and the golden ratio exhibited by flower petals, shells, and even galaxies. The symbol is often found on ancient carvings of the mother goddess and is strongly associated with this primeval deity. The winding passage to the center is a labyrinth motif. It also represents the cyclical forces of nature, such as seasonal growth patterns and the lunar cycle, which are essential to life. Cyclic forces create change. The old makes way for the new. Life is neither permanent nor static, but flows in a never-ending cycle. Indeed, the spiral is the doorway to life. The mother goddess is an important aspect of this symbol. Archaeological evidence suggests that the earth was once viewed and worshipped as a living female being. The earth mother represented the fertile earth and the safety of underground caverns which is also interpreted in terms of the womb. Think of ancient man, for whom the cave was more than just a place of abode. Paleolithic man lived in the womb of the earth, the womb of the earth goddess, in caves of regeneration and transformation, safe and also sacred. Her association with the underground also qualifies the mother goddess as a chthonic deity, linked to the other world, where the souls of the dead reside. It is thus fitting that the children of the forest should express their bond with nature via the spiral, and even more so that the focus of this symbol is a weirwood heart tree, the tree of life, also known as the axis mundi or the cosmic pillar. Early depictions of the spiral often bore seven cycles with a dot marking the center. This is a great parallel to the arrangement centered by the weirwood we see here, which also has seven arms. The children lived in the security of the cave system beneath this weirwood, and until recently it was a sanctuary, as safe as a mother's womb, even warded against whites and white walkers. Equally important in this context is the labyrinth motif. We can envisage this as pathways within the recesses of the precious cave, pathways through the subconscious, pathways through consciousness, pathways to commune with the ancestors in the other world a mystical journey into other realms and back. The cave is permeated by the roots of the holy weirwood above, the tree of life that connects heaven above and earth below. In the darkness of the earth, amidst the roots of the weirwood, spirituality thrives and Bran's powers grow. So as we see, the spiral is also linked to intuition, to consciousness and to the supernatural. Indeed, we can spiral into subconsciousness, or into a dream, 
And in hypnosis, we imagine our eyes spiraling while we fall into a trance state. Let's now turn our attention to some of the patterns we see in the show. The very first episode and chapter of the series takes us to the execution grounds of Winterfell, where Eddard Stark beheads a deserter of the Night's Watch. Though no special rock formation is evident, the area is surrounded by monoliths not unlike those surrounding the children's weirwood. Interesting is the centerpiece of the Winterfell execution ground, a wooden log sunk into a large rock upon which the condemned places his head, perhaps meant to represent the central heart tree. Very intriguing are the symbols etched into this rock. Look closely and you will see circular carvings with what appears to be a single leaf in the middle. There are quite a few of them. We do not know if the children use their sacred grounds for other purposes, but the two sites do share the aspect of execution. As such, there is a certain irony to Will's death, which basically comes about because of his encounter with white walkers, while we now witness the ritual killing of a man of the first men, whose death turns him into a white walker. That episode also treats us to a wintry view of the mysterious ritual grounds, so similar to the design that man's raider, John Snow, and the wildlings discover on the fist of the first men. Man says they are creative, if one can call this gruesome arrangement of butchered horse carcasses creative. Now why would the white walkers arrange dead horses in this way? It's certainly a ghastly reminder of their origins within the symbolic spiral of the children of the forest. But I think both the symbol and the dead horses are a clue to something else as well. Consider this. Could there be a connection to the Dothraki, those horse lords whose main features, an undisciplined army, lust for blood and indiscriminate killing, echo the white walkers and their mindless army of the dead? Do the Dothraki also mirror the first men who arrived in Westeros on horseback and came with fire and bronze weapons, slaughtering the children and destroying their trees? When the Dothraki discover Daenerys after her flight on Drogon, they surround her by circling her. As more and more gather, a veritable spiral of horse riders forms around her, she the centerpiece of this design. We can clearly see the trampled grass they leave behind, circular, with arms stretching out, marking the influx of riders into the arrangement. So we have two similar symbols involving horses. I spent some time thinking about this, and suddenly it came to me. Jorah Mormont provides us with a direct connection between the Dothraki and the design at the fist of the first men, when he makes a fist after picking up Danny's pearl ring. He makes a fist, and I thought, yeah, this is the link, this is it. It's the fist. It connects the horse lords with the fist of the first men, and the dead horses arranged in a spiral by the white walkers. The fist is a symbol of solidarity and support, an expression of defiance and resistance. So did the first men raise their ring forts on the elevated fist north of the wall in resistance to the white walkers created by the children? Jorah's clenched fist, raised in defiance against the Dothraki, certainly seems to suggest this. Having established a link between the fist of the first men and the Dothraki, can we say the butchered horses arranged in a spiral allude to the Dothraki belief in the night lands, the starry Kalazar in the sky? It's possible, for another interpretation of this symbol is the cosmos itself, the cosmic spiral, the galaxy within which we reside, filled with a multitude of stars, a starry Kalazar indeed. From what we know, when a horse lord dies, his horse is slain with him, so he might ride proud into the night lands. The bodies are burned beneath the open sky, and the cow rises on his fiery steed to take his place among the stars. The more fiercely the man burned in life, the brighter his star will shine in the darkness. This is from one of Daenerys' chapters in A Game of Thrones. It seems to me Khal Drogo is another version of the Night's King. As a matter of fact, like the Night's King, Drogo was a warrior who knew no fear, his braid long, uncut, and hung with numerous bells proclaiming his prowess in battle. He rides in the night lands now, 
his spirit released from his body by the fire. The Dothraki are horse lords whose cars must ride or lose their position. In spirit, they ride their dead steeds to the starry Kalazar in the nightlands. They become the stars. The white walkers, with their bright blue eyes, claim the land in the night. Their blue eyes brilliant as the stars in a night sky. They rode dead horses during the long night, and they ride them now. I definitely see a parallel between the Dothraki horse culture and the white walkers here. Okay, so perhaps Danny's House of the Undying Visions can shed some more light on this. Many of us have wondered at the show's interpretation of the House of the Undying Visions. To recap, Daenerys walks through a red keep, destroyed and shrouded in winter, to emerge through the gate of Castle Black, north of the wall, of all places. She comes upon a tent a little further on, hardly visible through the winter mists. She is as pale as the Night's Queen herself. Inside the tent, she finds Khal Drogo with her son. Now, why would the showmakers turn Danny's visions into a scenario involving Khal Drogo, residing in a summer tent beyond the wall? In book one of the series, the only related vision is the one in which she sees a blue flower in the chink of the wall. But let's continue with a recap. Her son and stars, notes the stars, addresses Daenerys as the moon of his life and says, Maybe I refuse to enter the night lands without you, and if this is a dream, I will kill the man who tries to wake me. This kind of strikes a chord. Think of what we know about the others, that they sleep or have been asleep since the long night and have recently woken to plague mankind. Who woke them? Waking giants of the earth, anyone? It is stated that the children of the forest woke the giants of the earth around the time of the hammer of the waters. Could the giants of the earth be none other than the white walkers, created around the time of the hammer to deal with the first men on behalf of the children? If we follow this line of reasoning, Drogo's words to Danny could thus imply that if woken, he will return as a white walker, or being a carl, as the knight's king. Let's not forget that the spiral is also a representation of the mother goddess, a deity also associated with the underground, which can be interpreted in terms of the womb. Danny is pregnant, of course, during the stallion heart ceremony. Perhaps it's no accident, then, that the carving of a mother figure is visible in the background during the ritual. In the books, pregnant Danny also bathes in the sacred waters of a lake known as the womb of the world. She does this after the ritual. It is night, and the lake is dark, and a reflection of the moon, another feminine symbol, shatters and reforms on the lake as she bathes. Indeed, rippling water is another form of spiralism. This imagery of the mother goddess and the womb associate Dani with the underworld, and thus also with the night king's corpse bride, whom he is said to have chased and loved and given his soul along with his seed. Moreover, this lake is important in another aspect. I'm thinking of the Dothraki creation myth. This states that the first man and his horse emerged from the waters of the womb of the world. I think this is another analogy to the creation of white walkers, who first emerged from the sacred spiral ritual ground of the children of the forest. I hope you enjoyed this. And meanwhile, check out my blog link below for further insights into magic and mystery in A Song of Ice and Fire. Thanks for watching.